There are updates on multiple legal issues that former President Donald Trump is facing. The judge overseeing Trump's Georgia 2020 election case rejected his bid to have the case moved on the basis of free speech. This comes as New York Attorney General Letitia James is seeking more information about Trump's $175 million bond in his civil fraud case. So here to break it all down and what this means for the campaign is CBS News campaign reporter Katrina Kaufman. Hello. Good morning. So explain, why is Letitia James in looking into this bond? Um, what, why does that matter? So this is something I started investigating earlier this week. There are a number of issues with this bond, but the biggest concern for Attorney General Letitia James is whether or not the company can actually pay it. They're not technically licensed in New York to issue mm. surety bonds. There are certain regulations around this. And if you do have this licensing, you also get a certification that says you have sufficient assets to pay the bonds that you give. This company has never given a bond of this size. In fact, when I spoke with them, Trump gave them all cash as collateral. And that cash is not even in their hands. He has it in an account, in an account that's pledged to them. Hmm. Um, so what she's really worried about is whether or not this company will, in fact, be able to pay out the bond if Trump loses his appeal in the case. Wait, so if Trump has the cash, why doesn't he just pay it himself? Well, it's always that's, easier to, it's always nicer to use someone else's money. Oh, I know. That's how rich people stay rich in America, <laughs> right, exactly. right? You never pay for anything. But I, it was just a question, random question. <laughs> no, okay. it's a good question. Yeah, I right? the I same mean, thing That's a very that. good question. Yeah. So, all right, so what happens next? <laughs> They have 10 days, either Trump or the company, to justify the bond to show that they're able to pay it. And it looks like there's likely going to be a hearing on April 22nd back in Judge Ngoron's courtroom, which is where the civil fraud case took place in the mm. first place. All right. So let's talk about the case in Georgia. His, uh, he's accused of, um, you know, uh, trying to overturn the election results in Georgia. Yep. And uh, the judge in that case dismissed um, a request to have the whole thing thrown out on the basis of free speech. This is what you know, his lawyers do with, with every case, you know, here's another reason you should throw it out. Here's another reason you should throw it out. So in this case, they said free speech. The judge said no. What were they arguing? What did the what was the judge's response? So what they were arguing here is that they actually said every single charge in this indictment implicated core political speech or expressive acts. And they were saying as a result, it's all protected by the First Amendment. This whole thing should be thrown out. The judge said no, and President Judge Tanya Chetkin from the D.C. case had also said this. You can't use core political speech, even if it's political, in furtherance of a criminal act. This could mm. later be an issue to put before the jury, an issue of fact. But based on the indictment, this does not hold water. Hmm. Uh, all right. And some other news regarding the former president, uh, Judge Aileen Cannon, rejected um, his efforts to dismiss the documents case in Florida. What can you tell us about that? This is interesting because, in a sense, it looks like a win for special counsel Jack Smith. She has said that the case can't be dismissed based on the Presidential Record Act. But she said that there's no pretrial basis here, which means it could be brought up later. And really, a contention between Judge Cannon and Jack Smith has been whether the Pres Presidential Records Act can even be a part of this case. Mm -hmm. During jury instruction, she had given both sides. She seemed to be accepting this premise from Donald Trump that just because he took documents, including highly classified ones, and brought them from the White House to Mar-a-Lago. He turned them into personal records. Mm. And earlier this week, Jack Smith had said in another filing that if she was going to accept that premise, she needed to rule on it so that he could appeal to the 11th Circuit, which could cause a lot of problems for the judge and this case. Oh, man. It's all really interesting. Uh, Katrina Kaufman, thank you. Thanks for having me.